Example 25. The average weight of 19-year-old males is 176.8 pounds. The standard deviation is 26.4 pounds. If there is reason to believe that the distribution of weights for 19-year-old males is normally distributed, what is the approximate percentage of 19-year-old males that will weigh between 150.4 pounds and 203.2 pounds? All right, first thing you want to do is figure out what method to apply. And for me, this phrase here, what is the approximate percentage, that is a dead giveaway that we're dealing with the empirical rule. That is the language that the empirical rule uses because it provides an approximate percentage that's located inside a given interval. And here we have two numbers forming an interval. So it looks like to me this is empirical rule. There's one other thing that's a dead giveaway that it's the empirical rule, and that's this mentioning that it's normally distributed. So in Chebyshev's theorem, they talked about what percentage was inside an interval, but they never mentioned the idea that there was a bell curve involved in the problem. Because if they had, we would then know we could use the empirical rule. So during Chebyshev's rule, you're never told anything about the distribution. The only thing they might say is that they don't know anything about the distribution, and that means essentially that you have to assume that it could be any distribution and you must use Chebyshev's theorem. For the empirical rule, they have to tell you bell-shaped. So they can't get around saying normally distributed or saying this phrase bell-shaped or perhaps saying you know symmetric and mound-shaped. But they have to say something that indicates you're dealing with a bell curve um, type distribution. All right, so because they, they have those key phrases, we know it's empirical rule. Our next task is then to draw a picture of the bell curve. I recommend you do the picture because when the interval is not symmetric around the mean, you have to use sort of logic based on the drawing of the bell curve. So you want to be careful and do the drawing. Don't just find how many standard deviations you're dealing with away from the mean because sometimes that can be misleading if you don't do it properly. So instead I'll draw a bell curve and I'll just say, okay, looking at this bell curve, I'm going to put the mean right in the middle. The mean it says is 176.8, right? 176.8. And then they tell us the standard deviation is 26.4, 26.4. So let me take those pieces of information then and use them to start adding more places on this drawing. So one standard deviation out, let's see what that would be. Well, one standard deviation out means I'm gonna take the number that I've given there for my mean, 176.8, and I'm gonna add 126.4, right? I'll add one of those standard deviations. So 126.4 added to 176.8 ends up producing the answer 203.2. Well, that's exactly the number at the top of the interval they gave us, 203.2. If I do the same thing on the other side, this time taking away, right? So I'll do 176.8 and I will subtract off 26.4. And when I do that, I get 150.4. I stop as soon as I realize that I have both limits of my bell curve, or of my interval, pardon me. So I keep doing this, one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations. If I wanted to go up from here, I would add another 26.4 and then another one. And I keep doing the same thing on the other end. I subtract off one standard deviation, I subtract off another, so on and so forth. I keep doing that until I find the limits for my interval, right? So I found those limits, 150 to 203.2. So I want to know what percent of the data is inside that span. Well, since it was just one standard deviation above and just one standard deviation below, right? That's all I did. I added one time 26.4 and one time I took it away. Then that means I can apply this step of the empirical rule, which says, hey, 68% of the measurements will fall within one standard deviation of the mean. And one standard deviation of the mean means one above and one below. That means the total area in here is 68%. And so that's the answer to the question. The answer for this problem is 68% because it's one standard deviation above and below the mean, and that's how the interval has been created. Okay, that's it.